I told you earlier that there was a good chance I would spend most of my break like this. <laughs> and I have. That was honest. But it's actually been a lot more like this. than this. I have spent a lot of this break writing. My friend Renee and I came up with this plan. We both had ideas for novels to write and we were talking and she was like, hey, let's do a NaNoWriMo but in January. And then after a couple of days, she was like, maybe we should extend it to February. We joined the site 750words.com. Look down under for a link. You have to write 750 words each day. If you don't write one day, they'll put you on the wall of shame. And 750words.com is cool because it gives you like ratings. During last semester, I started writing these little short articles. And um, I'm going to post them on the Omnictionary eventually. But they're not all done yet. And you can look down under for a link to the Tumblr where they're posted right now. Finally, <laughs> I just read a kid's book and I'm going to read it for you. How does that sound? Good? Good. Kate Winchelhurst gets magical powers. Technically, Kate Winchelhurst had always had magical powers, even when she was six years old and obnoxious to boot, but she didn't know that then, and because I'm not too keen on six-year-olds, we won't discuss that time of her life. We'll skip ahead to when she was 19, and awesome. One day, when Kate Winchelhurst was 19, and awesome, she found a book. A book called If You're Magical, You Can Do Magic. Ignoring the obvious and absurd title, Kate, ever the avid reader, checked the book out from the public library and read it. It was a book of spells. But then she lost it under her bed for three weeks. During the three weeks that the book If You're Magical, You Can Do Magic was lost under Kate Winchelhurst's bed, she met a boy named Jesse James, whose parents surprisingly knew nothing about either the Jameses or the Youngers although they were rather intelligent alliteration things. A lot of the things that Jesse did irritated Kate. Like, he walked on ledges and drummed on tables and wandered off mid-conversation. But then he also did a lot of things that did the opposite of irritate Kate, whatever the opposite of irritate is. Like, he would randomly burst out in song or ta tap dance on tables, both of which Kate found rather amusing. So Kate befriended Jesse regardless of his reckless behavior and annoying habits. And they were pretty good friends, too. But then Catherine Buds and Billy Adair suggested to Kate that they be something more, which Kate thought was stupid, because after all, Jesse was a boy, and boys are quite gross, which she pointed out to Catherine and Billy, but they ignored her and were persistent. And regardless of what you've learned in school, persistence is mostly just annoying. So Kate went on a search for her book of spells because she'd like to know whether or not she was magical. Out of curiosity and a little bit of spite, she tried one of the spells the next time her friends were harassing her. Both Billy and Catherine promptly turned into turtles, which amused Kate, but don't worry, she turned them back. At any rate, that was how and when Kate Winchelhurst learned of her magical powers. The end. I hope you enjoyed that little book of mine. I'll see you later.